Hey folks, Nick Mock 007 here again, and today we're gonna round out our talk about glutaraldehyde, aka liquid carbon. But first, I know a lot of you are hearing about Southern Delight fish food, uh, but living in the deep south myself, I found a new sponsor. So here's a word from my new sponsor, Bible Belt Fish Foods. Okay, so in today's video, my goal is to break down how glute or gluteraldehyde works. The problem is no one knows how it works. All right, so see you in the next video. Don't forget to, okay. In all seriousness, though no one really does know how it works, there's a lot of good scientific information out there that can get us several steps closer than just shrugging our shoulders. So as always, I put my sources in the info in the description, but for this one, I had to dig a bit deeper. Now, I read several journal articles that I you know, uh, looked over and uh, before I made this video, but some of that gets a little bit too technical and I'm gonna try to make sure much of this video is in plain English, um, but bear with me a little bit and I'm sure we'll all learn something. Remember, please don't add any chemical to your tank without understanding what it is, what it does, why you're adding it, the basics to start with. All right, let me tell you what Seachem says about Excel. Remember, this information comes from Seachem. So take that into account when you know, you're interpreting the data. And to the question, does it even work? Well, most fish keepers seem to think yes, but according to Seachem, they say in controlled studies, well, in their own controlled studies, they saw a 200 to 500% increase in plant growth with the addition of Excel. Now, furthermore, Seachem says that because cell is an organic carbon source, it does not impact pH. They say that the chemical structure of Excel is quite similar to the products of photosynthesis, which I'll put up here on the screen. Now, remember those later. Well, you don't have to remember them, but remember this point later, because I'll reference it again. In other words, Excel possesses the same basic five carbon chains seen in these molecules. But so what? How do plants actually use it? Well, Seachem admits they don't know. Now, they say they could figure this out through radioactive C14 tracers, but they've not done these studies yet, and they probably won't because people are buying the product, it's working, and most people don't really care about exactly how it works. But they do go on to propose two possible pathways. One, adsorption, and two, transformation. Now, remember in my last video, the active ingredient in Excel is polycycloglutaracetyl. Apparently, if uh, it is charge neutral and of relatively low molecular weight, and therefore can readily be adsorbed across the cell uh, membranes of most plants. Now, once pleasant within the cell, there are two possible modes of action. It may be biologically converted into CO2 and then utilized in that fashion, or it may be converted into any number of more complex organic compounds, uh, things like sugars, starches, amino acids, but things that plants need. Um, now, these conversions are mediated by a variety of enzymes. Okay, and that's what Seachem says. So not to say that they're wrong, but let's look at some other data sources as well and see what else we can sort out. Okay, first off, let's look at photosynthesis. Okay, so we all know light is involved in photosynthesis, uh, but here's a simplified version of it. Okay, now <clears throat> this you know, really is just how plants use CO2 light and nutrients to produce oxygen. But there's also a much more complicated light independent process going on called the Calvin cycle. Uh, different Calvin, but same idea. Suffice to say that these reactions uh, take the light dependent reactions from photosynthesis and perform further chemical processes on them to help convert the CO2 and other compounds into glucose. Uh, now for our part, we can think of glucose as energy to help plants grow and you know just generally look awesome. Now there are three phases to the Calvin cycle and I'm really gonna focus, well not focus, but really only mention the first phase, carbon fixation. Now, it's likely that Excel is entering into the Calvin cycle, uh, though the question is exactly where. Now, there are three likely places where this could be occurring, but I'm not really going to go into specifics here because it gets extremely technical. But if you're interested in these specific steps uh, about where it may be entering into the Calvin cycle, I'm going to list it as my first source in my video description. It'll take you to, to um, a discussion board with Tom Barr, who helped develop Excel. Um, but in particular, check out post number five, which is not by Tom Barr, but really informative. Either way, the end result is that oxygen is produced just like the regular photosynthetic pathway. But given that the plant growth is fairly slow with Excel compared to uh, you know, supplementing with pressurized CO2, the amount of oxygen produced is pretty small. But what seems to be occurring here is that plants are producing an enzyme that biotransforms glutaraldehyde into an intermediate glutaric acid, 
which then undergoes further metabolism ultimately to carbon dioxide. Though after reading some journal articles, this conclusion is a bit of an extrapolation based on aerobic microbial metabolism of glutaraldehyde. So while we don't know this for sure, it may be that much of this is taking place in the, carb uh, the carbon fixation phase of the Calvin cycle that I mentioned before. Now a couple odds and ends. One, to answer a question from ADU Aquascaping about um, what percent of CO2 is created after it decomposes. Again, this is extrapolating from microbial metabolism of glutaraldehyde. Um, it appears that glutaraldehyde is metabolized ultimately to CO2, achieving a yield of about 68%. Another thing I, want, uh, I wanted to mention briefly was safety. Now, if you haven't seen part one, go back and watch it. Um, I'm not recommending people use glutaraldehyde in their tank, but trying to help people decide whether they want to, or if you already are, how does it, you know, how does it work? As I mentioned before in my first video, there are safe handling concerns, you know, but there are safe handling concerns with lots of things, many things under our kitchen sink, like bleach. There can be fatal consequences to overdosing gluten in your aquarium, though if you dose at the lower concentrations recommended uh, and based on the rapid half-life, uh, half-life is about 10.6 hours, the data appear to support that using products like Excel, using them as recommended, is safe. But that's why I present this data and give you my sources. If you have doubts, post in the comments, do your own research, come to your own conclusions. Now, I hope this mini series has been useful, if not entertaining. Uh, I have plenty of other topics to explore, but if you have other aquarium science related questions, feel free to let me know. You probably have better ideas than I do. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you didn't, hit that dislike button, hit it extra hard, or heck, hit it twice. But better yet, leave me a comment, uh, you know, so I can make improvements in the future. I really do listen to constructive criticism, um, you know, whether it's about editing, fish tanks, the information I'm providing, the presentation. I'm interested in whatever you think. And, uh, you know, if you are interested in these kinds of questions, these kinds of videos, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and stay up to date. The next video out should be another Science Alliance collaboration with Cam. Uh, and I really do have an update video coming on my tank. I shot a bunch of footage. Haven't had a chance to edit it together, but I will make that happen. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.